Today we're going to have a look at this tiny robot vacuum which is actually quite powerful for its size and there are a couple of areas of my home that none of my other vacuums get to that this one can. Most robot vacuums are actually quite bulky which means that you normally have to find quite a big space for the vacuum and its docking station but with this one you can fit it into a spare corner of a room quite easily so if you've got a flat or if you're limited on space then this might be good for you. Having said that, it's not just for small spaces. I have been using this perfectly well on one of my floors in my house and it's navigated every room fine, with half of its battery level left by the end of one cleaning session. Speaking of navigation, there was a previous version of this model called the K10 Plus, which apparently didn't have very good edge detection. Thankfully, they have fixed that for this version and I've had no issues with the top of my stairs. It looks like it's going to dive straight down the stairs, but then it always stops just in time and this means that it cleans right to the edge. Switchbot wanted to send me the original K10 Plus version when it came out last year, but given that it was their first ever vacuum, I decided to wait and see what else would come out. And I'm glad I did because this K10 Plus Pro model is a very decent vacuum. The suction power on it is actually quite powerful at 3000 pascals. And for comparison, this is half of the suction power of the S10 Switchbot flagship vacuum and mop that I reviewed recently. But on the other hand, it's actually more than a thousand pascals more than my Roomba 980 and my Roborock S50 vacuums that I've been using for many years in my house. When I first set it off in our lounge, it left an interesting pattern on the carpet, which I haven't seen before, but this is probably a good indication that it's managing to get a good amount of the dust out of the carpet. It has a decent sized dustbin on board and the base station has an auto empty feature starting to empty dust with a bag which is big enough to probably hold at least a couple of months worth of dust. So really the only maintenance tasks that you're going to need to do is to check the roller for hairs and change the filter occasionally. The roller is a rubber roller rather than one with bristles, which means that it doesn't really get hair tangled up in it as easy as other models. I've been using this vacuum for a while for general vacuuming on our first floor and I've been happy with the results, but I also decided to do a test in the kitchen with some large crumbs, a couple of Haribo sweets and I put a teaspoon of sugar on the floor as well. It picked up the crumbs easily and even the Haribo sweets that I thought it might struggle with. On the first pass it picked up a good amount of the sugar but not all of it and so I got it to do a second pass and then all the sugar was gone after the second pass. Because of its size and the spinning brush on the side it's able to nicely get into the corners of the room. One thing that this vacuum definitely isn't for though is for mopping. Going back to my old Roomba, this didn't even have mopping capability because it knew its place as a great robot vacuum for its time. And I feel like they should have done the same with this one really. But if you really want to give it a try, then you can find the mopping attachment in the top of the base station lid. And then you'll need to attach it with some wet wipes to the bottom of the hoover. You'll also need to ensure that it's in mopping mode in the app and that you only select the rooms that don't have carpets in them. I like that it won't actually let you select mopping mode in the app until you've actually attached the mop to the vacuum. Like the S10 vacuum app, the experience is pretty good, but surprisingly it's a completely different interface between the K10 Plus Pro and the S10. You can see that the map looks different and the layout of the settings is different as well, but it's still very intuitive, allowing you to select between a whole house clean mode, select between rooms where you can choose which rooms in what order, and also an area mode as well. You can also create multiple maps if you plan on using this on multiple floors of your house. And when you set it up the first time, the vacuum will need to go around the house and map it out first, which will take between five and 10 minutes depending on the size of your home. As well as having the usual functionality like being able to set schedules, it has a couple of other interesting features. It has a child lock mode, which makes it hard for your child to accidentally set off the vacuum when you're not looking. You just need to then press the home button on the vacuum for three seconds and it will turn off that mode. Child lock turned on. Buttons are locked by child lock. Please press and hold the home button for three seconds to turn off child lock. 
One of the confusing settings is a dust collection menu, allowing you to select how long the dustbin emptying process takes and how often it does it. I would just expect this to sort of manage itself really, but I've left it on the default settings and that's been fine for me. In terms of integrations, they're the same as the S10, which means that you can link it to Google Home, Amazon, IFTTT, as well as via Matter. It unfortunately also has the same limitations for the Matter integration though, which only exposes an on-off switch in something like Home Assistant. So there's no other settings available like cleaning modes or selecting the rooms. I believe that the Matter standard itself does need some updates for robot Vacuum so that it can support selection of rooms, but there's a lot of other functionality that SwitchBot could implement now, and so I really hope that they implement this soon. So summarising this vacuum, I would say that it's a very decent and capable vacuum, and you shouldn't be put off by the size of it. The performance and battery life is more than sufficient for my needs, and it's got the auto-empty base station as well, which makes it almost maintenance-free, and it's earned a permanent spot now in our home. It's sad to see that now my 10-year-old Roomba is getting pushed to the side, but I certainly won't miss its over 70 decibel noise when it's running, that's for sure. I was planning on reviewing another great robot vacuum and mop that I bought recently, but unfortunately robot vacuum reviews don't seem to do too well on my channel, so I'll probably part that for now, and I'll see you in another smart home video soon. So thanks, until next time.